Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Okay, right, so we're currently discussing the CRISPR-Cas9 system as it appears within bacteria, and it's specifically um, found within Streptococcus pyogenes. Now, there are other analogous systems found in many other species of bacteria and uh, archaea as well, uh, but the specific enzyme Cas9 was found in Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, more generally, these are just called Cas enzymes. Okay, right. So, um, we have discussed that part of the bacterial genome is known as the CRISPR locus, okay, and this contains these repeats, okay, this, these sequences of organic bases that are repeated multiple times, and in between these repeated uh, sequences, what you're going to have is little fragments of viral genomes um, from viral infections which you have survived. Okay, right. Now, if you want to integrate into your um, CRISPR locus a new fragment from a new viral genome that you've just uh, survived, you are going to integrate it in at the 5' prime end of the coding strand. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, this is a piece of DNA, remember. So it can be read by uh, the enzyme RNA polymerase um, to uh, produce a um, piece of mRNA, basically. Okay, now, only one of the strands of the DNA here is actually going to be read by RNA polymerase. Okay, uh, and the strand that is actually read by RNA polymerase is going to be called the coding strand. Okay, so let's say it is this bottom strand here. Okay, so I'll just redraw out this picture here. So here we have our DNA. Okay, and now what's going to happen is we're going to um, we're going to read the strand on the bottom here, okay, and we're going to turn it into a piece of complementary mRNA. Okay, so in blue here, this is a piece of mRNA. Right, uh, so this strand that is actually used to construct the mRNA, this is what's known as the coding strand. So this is the coding strand. Okay, right. So this is the one that the RNA polymerase enzyme will use to produce this piece of mRNA from. Right. So, when you add in a, a new fragment from a viral genome that you have just managed to survive, okay, that's going to be added in at this five prime end of the coding strand. Okay, so you're going to basically put it in here. Okay, like so. Okay, and now you've got that new fragment of the viral genome within your CRISPR locus. Okay, right. Now, what does this result in? Well, it results in all your progeny cells. So when you divide and produce daughter cells, all of those will have this new portion of the viral genome integrated into their CRISPR locus. Okay, so all your daughter cells will have uh, this... Um, viral fra genome fragment within their CRISPR locus. Okay, now what does this mean for the daughter cells? Well, basically, they're all going to be immune against the viral infection now. The virus is not going to be able to take hold of them. Okay, they are all protected. Now, how does this work? Well, basically, what you can do now is you can transcribe this CRISPR locus, okay? Now, the entire CRISPR locus is going to be uh, transcribed as one, basically, okay? So you're going to open up the DNA here, and you're going to produce a piece of mRNA that is complementary to this um, coding strand of the CRISPR locus. Okay, so let's draw this. So, let's say this is our piece of mRNA that's going to be complementary to this coding strand here. So I'll mark on it in the same colours the portions that we have. So here is the piece of mRNA that's complementary to this red portion, okay, which remember came from our uh, viral genome that we've just been infected with. Okay, then we have the CRISPR repeat here, okay. Following that, we have some other viral genome fragment that was, we were previously infected with. Then we've got another CRISPR repeat, okay? And then finally, we've got another viral genome fragment there. 
and then another CRISPR repeat. Okay, so this is a piece of mRNA now. Okay, and at the moment it's a very long piece of mRNA. So the entire CRISPR locus has been transcribed into this long piece of mRNA. Now what's going to be ha happen is that this um, long mRNA is going to be chopped up, it's going to be processed into much smaller fragments of mRNA. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut here and here, basically. And obviously this will go on much, much longer and you'll continue cutting further down. Okay, so that each fragment has a piece of viral genome with a piece of CRISPR repeat attached to it as well. So what you're going to create then is, in my picture at least, you're going to create these three smaller pieces of mRNA, um, each of which has a viral genome. Here's the red portion, or a piece of mRNA that's complementary to a strand of the viral genome. Okay, so here we are. And it also has this CRISPR repeat portion, which is complementary to that CRISPR repeat portion on the DNA strand there. Okay, right. Now, these much smaller pieces of RNA here, these are known as CRRNAs. Okay, so this stands for CRISPR RNAs. Okay, so the CR here is short for CRISPR. Okay, right. So, we now have lots of these CRISPR RNAs which are going to be within the cytoplasm of our bacterial cell. Now, what they are going to do is they're going to bind to another piece of RNA and this complex of two pieces of RNA is then going to load onto the Cas9 enzyme. So let me firstly describe this other piece of RNA. So uh, in addition to having the CRISPR locus within your genome, you're also going to have a, p a piece of DNA uh, which is going to code for a piece of mRNA uh, known as the uh, transactivating CRISPR RNA. Okay, so let me draw this piece of RNA here. Okay, right. So, this portion in yellow, this is meant to represent a piece of RNA, and it's going to be known as the transactivating CRISPR RNA. Okay, and for short, the transactivating CRISPR RNA uh, is often abbreviated to uh, the tracker RNA. Okay, now I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so we abbreviate the transactivating down to TRA, okay, then we put the CR for CRISPR, and then we put RNA, okay, so this is just a piece of RNA, I've drawn it in a weird shape, yes, but you'll see why I've drawn it in that shape in a moment, okay, now, this piece of RNA here, this section of the transactivating CRISPR RNA here, this is going to be complementary to the sequence within the um, RNA of these CRISPR RNAs, which was complementary to the CRISPR repeat portion in the DNA. Okay, so what can happen is this can associate with that CRISPR repeat portion that you've now got in the CRISPR RNAs here. Okay, and then you've still got the viral genome portion. Okay, the piece of mRNA that's complementary to a strand of the viral genome, that's still uh, single-stranded here. Okay, so this complex now of a CRISPR RNA, a CR RNA here, okay, bound to a complementary section on a tracker RNA, uh, or a tracer RNA, um, these, uh, this complex is now going to associate with the Cas9 enzyme. Okay, so let's draw this here. So this is what's known as the Cas9 enzyme. Okay, or at least this box is going to represent what's known as the Cas9 enzyme. And what's going to happen is this complex of a CRISPR RNA here with this tracer RNA here, um, these are going to bind or load into the Cas9 enzyme. Okay, so here's the CRISPR repeat portion in purple, and here's the tracer RNA in yellow here. Okay, right. Now, you have got these Cas9 enzymes loaded with these complexes, and these are now sitting in the bacterial cell, just waiting for that viral genome to 
dare to enter the cell again. And now let's say this cell does get reinfected with the bacteriophage, with the same bacteriophage that originally that mother cell long ago got infected with and survived. Okay, so what's going to happen now is this long piece of double-stranded DNA from the virus is going to come in. Okay, now some portion of this is complementary to this mRNA here. So let's just think this through. This mRNA we produced here was complementary to this strand here. We suppose that this lower strand was the coding strand. Okay, so it is therefore complementary to this strand, not the top strand. It will bind to the lower strand. Okay, in turn, this little red fragment we had here was derived from this little section of the viral genome now. Okay, that means that this red section here in our uh, CRISPR RNA is going to be complementary to this strand here, the bottom strand, basically. Okay, right. So, what now is going to happen is our viral genome is going to bind um, to this portion of the CRISPR RNA here that is complementary to one of those DNA strands. Okay, so it's going to load into the Cas9 enzyme now. Okay, like so. So what's going to happen is the strands are going to come apart. So this portion here and this portion here are no longer going to be bound to one another. Instead, this portion is now going to bind with the mRNA here. Okay, so these portions remain bound together like so. Um, but now, this little section of our viral genome, which is DNA, has now bound to this piece of mRNA here, instead of its complementary DNA strand. And now what will happen is the Cas9 enzyme will produce a double strand break. It will chop the DNA uh, in half, basically. It'll cut both of the uh, sugar phosphate backbones and produce what's known as a double strand break or a DSB for short. Okay, so DSB stands for double, that's the D, strand, that's the S, and then break. Okay, right, so it produces this double strand break in the genome and hence it will chop the viral genome up basically. Now, you might integrate multiple fragments of this viral genome into your CRISPR locus. So this means that you might have Cas9 enzymes which are going to uh, recognize the viral genome at many different places basically. So you might get cuts all the way along and this is going to stop the viral genome from actually being able to function. So the Cas9 enzymes are nuclease enzymes, okay? Now, they don't have a specific target, basically. They are targeted by which um, CRISPR RNA, along with a transactivating CRISPR RNA, docks here, basically. So you can put in whatever CRISPR RNA you like here, and then the Cas9 enzyme will target to uh, a portion of DNA which has a sequence complementary to that CRISPR RNA. Okay, so this means that we can use Cas9 enzymes, basically, to cut DNA at specific points, to produce double-strand breaks at specific points, okay? So this is an incredibly versatile system for producing double-strand breaks in DNA, because basically you can target uh, the double-strand breaks to whichever specific sequence of DNA that you want, basically, using these CRISPR RNAs. And the bacteria are using this as a means to protect their uh, progeny from uh, recurrent viral infection, basically. Okay, so that's why it's compared to an adaptive immune system, because it's as though this mother cell was vaccinated by managing to survive uh, the uh, bacteriophage infection. Okay, and then it's passed on this immunity to all of its uh, daughter cells, basically. Okay, right. So that's the CRISPR-Cas9 system in bacteria. What we now want to look at is how we can make use of this to produce genetic knockouts. Okay, specifically we want to talk about how to produce a knockout mouse, which is an incredibly important tool for understanding the importance of certain genes. Okay, and we'll start the discussion of that in the next video.